Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. I've had a question lately, quite frequently, how do I choose a texture for my photo? So I thought I'd do a short video, or it may be long because I tend to ramble, on how I work and how I choose the textures I do and why and things like that. So I'm going to take you through my gallery and I'm going to talk about a few of the recent photos um, that I've done and how I chose the texture. This particular image here of a bluebird, I have tons of photos of this bluebird sitting on a basketball goal. They, the basketball goal is right by my bird area and the bluebirds love to perch on there. They're trying to eat all the berries off the bushes around this area. And so they'll perch on the basketball goal and then they'll dive down to go get some berries. And so I have hundreds of photos like this of this bird um, or of a bluebird on the basketball goal. And they all look the same. I mean, they might be turned a different way. The lighting might be a little different, but it's pretty much all the same thing. By using textures, I can turn each one into a new work of art. Um, with this one, I was in a fun mood when I made this one. Um, it's an abstract design. I was thinking of the blue and the orange that were was in the texture and how it would blend nicely with the bluebird and the basketball goal rim, which is also kind of orange. So I decided to place the bluebird photo on top and I lined the blue up uh, with the bluebird onto the blue of the background. And first he was turned the other way, but then I realized right here is the light source in this texture, this bright patch of yellow and white. So I turned him around so it would line up with his eye, so the light from here would be shining over here. And I just, just like I did in the Nature Splash collection video and how I showed you, I just basically masked right away some of this stuff so the texture would come through and be real abstract looking. Um, so I guess the point in this one is decide what kind of mood you're after for the piece. If I wanted a real soft, subtle portrait, I would have, or, you know, um, I would have chosen a different texture that was real smooth that I could blend in with his feathers. But for this one, I was in a fun mood. I was wanting to create something high energy because it reflects the personality of this bird at the time. He was very, even though he's just sitting there perched, he was very high energy. He was looking out for other bluebirds who were coming to get the berries and he was attacking them. So there was a lot of energy going on, and I kind of wanted to portray that, but I wanted to get rid of all the background of the basketball goal that was behind him and just kind of turn him into his own work of art. Um, and this brings me to another topic. Does your photo need a texture? And I'm going to hop over to a Facebook photo I put up yesterday. This Facebook photo I put up yesterday is a what I will use as a stock photo and go in my stock account on Fine Art America which is through wildbirdphotographs.com this is where I put my straight photography that I don't do anything with where the photos are so good by themselves that they just need to be published that way um, when I decide to add a texture I'm thinking of buyers and who's going to buy this. More than likely individuals are not going to buy this photo of a bluebird attacking another bluebird to hang in their home. More than likely they're not. Um, I wouldn't if it was me. That's, you know, I don't want a piece of art or a photograph hanging in my home where something's fighting necessarily. Um, this looks pretty rough. These bluebirds were very rough with each other when they were fighting. I mainly have published this one um, under my stock account as in order for licensing because there are magazines or books or uh, companies that may 
wish to illustrate in a blog post or something of that nature how to um, you know how these birds act and they just need a photograph to demonstrate that and these photos are available for licensing to those companies so this would not be one I would put a texture with okay let's go back over here but this one with the bird sitting is a great one to put texture with and like I said since I have so many of the same bird in different poses on the same spot with the same lighting by adding different textures I can create all new works of art and I chose this one because of the high energy of the bird of the bird at the time because I tend to think of that what's the mood going on with the wildlife I'm photographing at the time are they calm are they hyper are they angry um, and I try to kind of portray that with the texture I choose okay let's go to another one let's see what we've got here now this one yesterday that I did this cardinal had some really nice lighting on him but had a lot of branches back here a lot of busyness um, with this one I chose the texture mainly because the colors of it had the great lighting right here but it also had colors that blended with this piece of bark he was sitting on so I knew it would be an easy blend to blend this bottom corner in and kind of just darken this the edges up here by placing the texture up here and over where the branches were or actually I masked away the branches to reveal the texture because the texture is always on the bottom when I start work um, so I chose this one specifically because of the lighting and I chose to blend with the color of the bark in this one this one here I chose once again chose because of the lighting because the texture had some strong light right here the puppy had a splash of sunlight on her nose and I wanted to uh, really focus on this and bring that light in there but I also chose this because the brownish tones of the texture blended with the fur of the puppy and it got rid of the uh, grassy background that was behind the puppy now this one once again had lots of branches back here lots of busyness I don't know if some of you probably saw the original photos of this when she caught this fish um, I lucked out on this day I happened to be standing right under the tree where she brought the fish into but it had lots of busyness here I wanted to bring the focal point totally to the eagle and her catch so I used a very dark texture which would go with the dark tones of her feathers and the dark color of the bark that I could blend in over um, the edges of her feathers and bring the focus to right here which is where it needed to be so it looks like she's actually coming out of the texture um, here's another one where I chose the texture based on lighting the dog had strong light coming from this way so I chose a texture that had light coming from this way and it has the brown tones which would blend um, in with the fur and and go with like this doesn't blend with this fur very well because this is black and this is brown but this brown here goes with this brown here and that is a factor I'll, I'll choose a texture a lot of times based on the fur or the feathers color of the animal as well as lighting lighting plays a big part in how I choose textures now this one the dog was on a grooming table at the dog show and the groomer was actually standing here with a hairdryer pointed at the dog and the dog was shaking his head because the hairdryer was tickling this ear and I sat on this photo for a long time I thought it was cute I didn't really know what to do with it until after I had created the winter collection with the snowflakes winter collection one which has the snow in it and it just dawned on me after I did that that the snow falling on the dog might tickle the dog's ear and make him shake their head at least my dog does when he's out in snow and it falls on him he'll shake his head because it tickles so I placed the dog on top of this wintry texture masked away all the background including the groomer and the hairdryer and then added the snow on top uh, and created this winter scene and it 
I chose this this texture because the bottom of the texture actually blended in nicely with the fur of the dog. Um, this is one of those pictures where I, since I'm shooting with a big telephoto lens most of the time, um, I will often end up cutting off body parts of the animals and birds, not because I want to, just because I'm too close. And so here the dog's legs were cut off right here because they just wouldn't fit in the frame with the big telephoto. So by using this texture with the same color of fur as the dog had down here, it blends over it nicely to make those the bottom part of the dog disappear. It's not so evident that the photo's cut off right there when you do that. And, of course, the blue is a nice contrast for the white, which is another way I'll choose texture, is contrast. Um, does the texture have a nice contrasting color? Let's see, that's a painting. And here's a bear photographed at the zoo. The bear was walking on rocks. Um, and it just looked kind of boring. It had rocks behind him. And there was people standing up here looking down on him. And he was just kind of sauntering along. And I wanted to create a more moody piece for him. So I chose this texture, which kind of had a ground level that I could blend easily with his rocks. And also this colors of the blue and gray kind of go really nice as a contrast for this brown fur so that's how I choose chose that one same thing here with the tiger another zoo photo where the tiger was just standing there on some rocks um, lots of busyness behind fences and things like that wanted to get rid of that and create a, a I don't know more fantasy type look so I used this texture with a ground level area that I could blend with his ground level. This one uh, was all about lighting and feather color. Um, the bird was sitting in direct sunlight on a tree branch and I was hanging out a window photographing this with a 500 millimeter. So it was quite uncomfortable, but I managed to get a few good shots and I love the catch light in the bird's eye right here and the strong light on this side. So I chose a texture that had strong light on one side and dark area on the other side. So I could blend that with uh, the same tones that were in the bird as far as lighting. Um, and that, uh, that worked really well for that one because of the strong light in the texture on this side and the strong light on the bird on this side. Uh, let's see here. Go past some of these. This one's all about contrast. Cardinals are beautiful birds. And being there, they have this beautiful red tones. You can blend them with pretty much any shades of brown. But when you contrast that, when a cardinal's sitting in a pine tree, there's a big contrast with, um, the green of the pine tree and the red of the cardinal and that is what I was after here um, this cardinal wasn't sitting in a pine tree but I had just seen right before this the cardinal had been sitting in a pine tree so I didn't get a good picture of that but I got a good picture when he landed on this naked branch and so I thought I'll choose a texture that has those colors of the pine because I really like the contrast of that and so that's how this one was chosen. Um, here's another one that was chosen based on lighting. The deer was backlit in a field. That's why I had a strong glow behind the deer. And um, the, it made the field nice and golden. So I chose a texture that had those golden tones that I could blend with this field. Um, which is when you have to show something like this. Because there's no way I could basically cut this deer out because we have uh, strands of uh, stalks of wheat or whatever this is coming up over the deer there's no way to get rid of it so it actually has to be blended with the texture to look right so I chose the texture in this case based on what would blend with the field better and the lighting and the texture had real strong light right here had the golden tones that would blend in nicely with the field and that's how I chose that one
I usually will try to choose the texture based on the animal or bird or object but if there's stuff interfering with that object I will try to choose a texture that will blend with the stuff that's interfering like this stuff because um, that helps it make more sense you can leave this stuff in there to show a sense of place and blend with the texture um, this one lots of busyness behind here with branches and everything these birds I have this dead branch here or stump that they love to land on before they head to the feeder and this one I was just this birds high energy the texture is high energy so once again on this one I was thinking of mood of the bird personality um, hyperness high energy and I kind of wanted to bring that to the finished piece and this little splash of greenish brown in the texture went well with the bark and was able to blend in nicely with that and it provided a nice contrast for this little fellow who had some of those greenish uh, blue tones like that showing up in his feathers just simply because it was in the shade and it produced a cooler image let's see here there's another one based on lighting um, now this one didn't it, there is a building back here behind this that is sort of this goldish tan color and so it kind of already had that color present in the background and I chose the texture based on that color of what was behind the bird and I just like warm colors so that worked well uh, it's a painting painting here's one I chose the texture based on the color of the nest the nest of course had the brown colors in it and had strong light on it on this side so I chose a texture that darker over here and lighter over here to blend in easier with the nest Now this is an example too of how I will place the artwork sometimes off to one side to create some negative space where I can add something like words and I'll show you something with that in a, in a minute. Here's the original without the words but there's plenty of room here to add words. Um, when I create my art since I am a licensed artist um, I often think of the um, manufacturer and what they might want to do with the piece and I actually have an example here to show you this is a licensed piece I had done several years ago where I used a texture for the background focus on the bird on the vase with the foliage here and the manufacturer wanted to add a Bible verse to it and because it had lots of negative space here that was empty it gives the manufacturer that opportunity to have a place to add those words and this was the finished piece they produced to put in Christian um, stores so I will use um, negative space a lot in my pieces that are finished um, people sometimes like it like this but sometimes they like it with words and so that gives the manufacturers I deal with through my agent um, an opportunity to have a place to put words just like I did in the previous one where I put home tweet home it get you know it, it has a place for the words and I actually normally would have put these words off to the side a little bit more instead of right here but I was thinking of the pillow because I wanted the words to fit properly on the pillow because I thought that was really cute so that's why I did the negative space on that one this one the bird had strong backlighting had a yellow belly and I chose a texture that had some yellow strong light right here that I could blend in nicely so it would make sense because the bird had the backlighting and notice I also blended in with some of the ground right here and so the texture that I chose had some color that would blend nicely over the bottom of the bird in that grass that brownish color grass without I, I didn't want a lot of contrast down here if this had been bright green grass down here I might have chosen a different texture that had green down here 
And there's an eagle. Here's another one. Uh, bird was backlit. Strong lighting over here. Strong lighting behind the bird in the original photo. So I chose a texture that had the blues in it that would go with the bluebird's feathers. And it had the strong light right here, which would make sense with the backlighting that was already on the bird. Yes, and that's my bird clock going in the background. This one here, um, even though a buffalo is not high energy normally, they're very strong. They're very powerful. So I chose a texture that had that mood to it um, from the Nature Splash texture. And it had this splash of dark brown right here. So it was very easy to blend that splash in with the dark brown of the buffalo and create that uh, powerful look in kind of an abstract fashion and kind of it indicates powerful uh, buffalo you're not going to think about you know big animal like this you're not going to think about sitting down and and petting them and cuddling with them in your lap so I felt it needed a very strong powerful look to go along with personality and the demeanor of the animal and that's why I chose this texture plus the color the splash of brown right there it blended real well and now here's another buffalo um, put this uh, texture with the sky here and once again brown to blend with the buffalo's fur down here here's another one with the personality of the dog this is my dog Max um, he's very high energy he's a very strong dog um, this if, if he's laying down and looking all sweet I would have chosen a softer texture to go with that mood but because he was running here and he was chasing something um, he was he, looking very powerful at that time and very high energy so I chose this texture because of the powerful uh, high energy look the texture had and I was able to blend it just right over him to make him look as if he's coming out of it here's a city image I don't do these very often this is a shot I took of Nashville um, from the car and across the bottom here is a guardrail and I really like the way this looked but I hated the guardrail wanted to get rid of it and it took me a year year and a half to decide what to do with this picture if I was going to do anything with it I published it as is cropping out the guardrail um, you know in case uh, somebody wanted to license a picture in Nashville for a newspaper magazine article things like that but um, for some reason, because of the blue tones in the building, um, when I did this splash texture, it made me think of this picture. And I decided to go get this picture back out and blend it in with this texture and just blended the edges right away so it would, it would go in with the texture. And I totally covered the guardrail down here so that's no longer present. It gives a, a nice abstract look to this city scene that was kind of boring otherwise if you ask me uh, here's another one um, bird with one of the nature splash textures she's on a fence um, this one I was after contrast I thought this bright green contrasted nicely with her feathers she actually had a bright green bush behind her when I photographed this and so that made the texture blended uh, quite a bit more easy because it was already going over green and and her you know these animals and birds I photographed they'll pick up the color tones of what's around them so you know she's photographed in front of a bright green bush she's got some bright green subtle little tones to her in a cooler temperature so I pay attention to that too what's what color tones are in their um, feathers and fur based on what they're around and I'll try to pick a texture that will go right with those tones even if I was to mask away every bit of I mean keep her very strong and not put the texture right over her would she still look good with this texture and the answer is yes because she was already in front of a bright green bush and she looked good in the photo so it made sense here's another one a uh, big buck indicates strong energy once again with one of the nature splash textures blended uh, perfectly in with this brown right here because of the colors and the deer um, just a very strong 
energetic animal and the texture helped portray that mood and same with the eagle and these nature splash textures and I've got several of these the eagles are strong very powerful birds blending them right in with those strong powerful textures with lots of energy because these were high energy shots um, here's another high energy bird chose this one uh, well first of all because the energy of the texture but the color of the feet and, and I'll do this I'll pick out something little and then choose a texture based on that color and this yellowish color in the texture went with the yellowish color of the feet it just created a nice offset and flow to it so as you can see there's a lot of ways that I choose it I'll choose it based on mood based on the color based on the lighting based on something small like color of feet or color of a beak um, this owl was backlit it was a very dark photo with a very bright splash right here so I chose a texture with a very bright light there where I could darken the edges and it would make sense to make the owl appear as if it was sitting in darkness could have put a moon in there too this is this little puppy I love this puppy she was standing in grass which had it was cold that day and the grass was brown and had frost on it a little bit of frost on it and the sun had started to come out and illuminate her on this side and I decided it would make a great winter shot so I chose a texture that had that uh, bottom color that would go with the, what she, the grass she was already standing in because I couldn't mask it away because it's coming over her feet so I needed to leave some of the ground level in there and so I chose the texture based on what was on the bottom and how it would blend with what she was standing in and then also added the snow to that one to create a nice winter scene even though it was nowhere near snowing and here's the same puppy again this time I tied in with her eye color um, now the puppy is actually a little bit more brown she's a chocolate lab and here she looks a little darker almost like a soft black but it was a cool photo it was taken in the shade there was really no Sun on her at this point and I chose to the texture color to go with the eye color and so I actually blended that over her which gave her a little bit more coolish look which took away from her brown fur and made it look kind of like a soft black or gray dark gray um, that's a very popular picture though let's see here uh, here's one where the deer was peering at me from behind the trees and you could barely see her except for in the photo you can see this the eye was magnificent in the photo it was very sharp so I chose a very dark texture with just a little light right there to bring out the eye to kind of create this neat picture of a deer looking out of the darkness this one once again chose um, texture based on the field color that the buck was standing in because the pieces of the grass were coming up over him I couldn't really get rid of that and have it make sense unless I cloned everything out and I don't like to spend a lot of time doing that so I chose this based on <clears throat> the field color to create an environment but not have it be so busy down here I like to bring the focus to my subject um, my straight photographs that are published under my other account th those are just as they are if people like those um, and I have some that like those but when I do my art I want to really bring the focus into the subject and um, do it in a nice soft transitional way like I did here by blending the texture right over the field but still leaving enough where you know the the buck is standing in a field and this is a composite uh, once again chose based on the field that the deer was in <clears throat> now this is a sky shot I have a lot of pictures of birds in the sky a lot of them in direct Sun a lot of them on cloudy days because I love to shoot on cloudy days when I this was shot on a cloudy day when I shoot on cloudy days the sky is pretty much blown out it's just white which enables white or light gray which enables me to easily add any texture um, with the subject so and this one these birds are even though they're here in Tennessee around some of our lakes and things they really make me think of a beach so I chose this one based on B 
beachy tones that are in the texture to create um, kind of the beachy feel to it, even though the bird wasn't at a beach. And um, I can do a lot with these sky shots that have a blown out sky. And there's Max again. And again. Here's a little bird that was um, photographed with uh, the background was a green bush, so this texture blended in nicely with it. Um, got rid of that and brought the focus into the bird on the on the uh, wreath. And there's one of my Christmas ones. Here's another winter one. Chose this one based on the fact that I could blend the texture with the white color of the horse's fur. And I love this little splash of blue right here. The horse actually had blue tones right here because that was in the shade. Direct sun over here. And so that really went nicely with this side of the horse's face. That little blue right there. And then I, of course, added the snow. Here's another one, hawk. Now this hawk was backlit with golden sunlight. Chose the texture to blend with the feathers of the hawk. And the lighting was right. And I gave him a little snow just for fun. Oh, let's see here. Here's another one where I chose based on the colors present in the field. It was very strong sunlight. All of this was very warm toned. So I chose a texture that had a warm toned base that I could blend that background away with, but yet leave a little bit of it showing just to give a sense of place. And here's a bobcat. This was a horrible photo. Bobcat was photographed in very low light at night, right right before dark, <coughs> crossing a street. He was on a concrete road right here. <coughs> and everything was very blue in the photo. The bobcat had a lot of blue in the fur. So I chose a texture that would go with that blue. If I chose a texture that was more warm or red or something like that, it would really contrast with that blue and it wouldn't look right. So I chose this one based on the, the blue tones that were present because of the low light and the coolness of the photo. Uh, so I could blend it right in with those tones that were already in the bobcat and make it look as if he's emerging right out of the texture. And of course I gave him some snow. Let's see here. There's another one where I chose a texture that had uh, some warm light right here. The deer was standing on the edge of a pond, and, and it was had a little sunlight coming in on this side, so it, it has that warmth to it. Here's another high-energy animal. Um, high-energy animal, uh, unless they're asleep, I feel like they need to be paired with a high-energy texture. Um, it depicts the mood of the animal. Um, you know, I don't always do a high energy texture with them. I do some soft textures with these kind of animals. But this tiger, in this instance, the way it was looking, it was very intent on something. It had its mouth open, showing its teeth a little bit. I wanted to play along with that energy. And this texture had the oranges that would blend, oranges and yellows that would blend nicely with the tiger's fur. Another high energy shot, high energy bird, very aggressive at this moment when I took the photo. So I was trying to portray that by using a texture that had some very strong brush strokes and, and showed some high energy. Um, this one purely chose this one to go with the golden tones of the deer and the field. Oh, uh, let's see. Here's a, another dog show one. Dog was sitting on a grooming table, heard the clicking of the camera, turned around, looked over her shoulder at me, and I was able to get this picture. Um, this is a very, this dog, it looked very sweet, very soft, very cuddly. So I chose a texture that was nice and soft and kind of pastel y that would go with the dog's fur nicely and give that sweet, soft look. Another high energy shot. Same bird, different texture. And I'll do that a lot. Um, not as much as I should, but I'll mask away the background, which enables me to put anything 
behind the bird that I want to as a texture. So I had that one and then I had this one. Two different looks, same bird. Uh, let's see here. Here's a landscape. Um, this one I just used the texture very softly and masked away right here to reveal the scene underneath. Um, I tend with a landscape unless I want to do very abstract look like I did with that Nashville city scene with those architectural buildings uh, with something like this that's kind of soft and peaceful I use a very soft texture without very strong strokes with very soft brush strokes and I'll use it very lightly with landscapes usually use these textures to maybe place on top with a landscape and change lighting and boost the lighting in certain areas like right here and I'll I'll blend some of the edges of the original photo away with the texture underneath to kind of bring the texture through and kind of make it blend. Uh, another one, uh, deer was, this deer was actually um, in a green field, but I had a little greenish brown in the texture, so I chose to work with that and leave a little bit of the field showing. It was a far away photo, which is why there's a lot of negative space here. If I would have blown this up, to fill this it would have been too pixely looking so I, I left it small and just chose a high energy texture to fill in that empty space um, there's also an opportunity now to add words here if somebody chooses to do so zoo photo um, chose a texture based on the background colors that would blend also blend well with the fur because of the dark bottom area of that texture. Flowers chose this one. The flowers had this purplish blue. This texture had this purplish blue splash right here. I just thought it looked neat, so I chose it based on that. Uh, and this one had sky behind her. There was nothing here. It was gray sky. She was carrying her fish away. She didn't like me photographing her with her fish, so she was taking it away, and I decided to give her um, this texture, which is more of a background texture. It actually has kind of a scene to it uh, behind her to make it look as if she was taking it off into the, the water in the distance, or that she maybe had just caught it right here, when in reality she would caught it back here, brought it in back to me, you know, where I was, and then turned around and flew away. That's what she was really doing. But here it kind of gives the impression that she just dropped down here, caught this fish, and was taken off with it. Here's another one of her with the fish. Once again with more scenic thing as if she'd just come up out of the water here with the fish. Once again, same scenic texture, this time with the goose. Um, some paintings. Uh, this one, I like the way this yellow here in this kind of somewhat scenic texture went with the yellow of the feet and the beak. And this is Dixie. Uh, Dixie is uh, sort of an orangish yellow cat and I just, this kind of impressionistic look with this yellow, I just thought it would blend well with her and make it look like she was sitting there with the sky behind her. And I gave her a little bird because she's always bird watching. This one I went solely on the lighting um, and the colors right here blended nicely with the fur around here. Anyway, I'm probably boring you now, but that tells you how I choose textures. Um, this one was all about contrast. Um, I could, you know, the other... You saw the other one with the hor the white horse with the snow. This is the same horse. That one, I chose the texture with the snow to blend with the fur on the horse. On this one, I wanted to go the other way, and so I chose a texture that con uh, had some contrast with the fur. So it would s make the horse stand out a little more. And I just play with them. I'll, I'll choose different ones, try different things, um, just to see what works and what doesn't work. There's no right or wrong way on how to do any of this. Um, it's all about your artistic vision and your artistic license 
the way I do it is not set in stone. I'm not, I, I would never say, okay, I do it this way, so you should do it this way. Um, but you can choose textures based on whatever reason you want. But I know some people have written to me lately and they had trouble choosing a texture and they wanted to know how do I choose a texture um, for my subject. So to recap it, um, fur color, feather color, object color it, that you can blend right in with to make a seamless transition. Uh, ground color if it's if you need to show a ground level and you want to blend in with the ground so it doesn't look like it's cut off and just placed there on the texture. You want to blend it nicely, choose a texture that will go well with that ground level or change the color of the ground level to go with the texture, which you can also do using your photo software. Um, choose a texture based on the the energy of the subject, the personality of the subject. Uh, if the subject is, you want to portray something soft and sweet and gentle, you choose a texture that has very soft and, and gentle appeal to it or soft strokes. You want, you have something that's powerful and high energy and you want to portray that, choose a texture that's got um, lots of heavy brush strokes and high energy look to it. Um, sometimes you can tie in with just a little something like um, an eye color or a beak color if it's a bird in this case look at the color of the halter on the horse and look at this color here it's very similar I didn't specifically choose this texture based on that but it's funny how it came out that way that it, it tends to blend real nicely with that halter right there um, on that one so there's different ways to do it based on whatever your end goal is, whatever your objective is for your finished piece. You can choose to have the subject smaller and show a lot of the texture off to the side as a background uh, because that gives you some empty space in case you want to add words later, make a greeting card, add words to make some other kind of products. Because I do products myself, plus I am I license my work to manufacturers I do a lot um, based on how it's going to look on different products not just as a print you know because I know everything will look fairly good as a print but uh, how's this going to look on a pillow how's this going to look on a shower curtain how's it going to look as a greeting card can I add words to it so I think like that a lot about my finished artwork anyway I Hope that that gives you a little insight in how I choose textures for my photos and answers some of your questions. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at dailytexture.com. And I want to thank you for watching and, and hope you have a great day.